<laughs> so you you told me you told me about uh, stoicism. Mm-hmm. I forget the guy's name you mentioned, and then Buddhism. Yeah. So <laughs> there's a lot of guys in stoicism. You know, you can go back to like Marcus Aurelius and his yep. original, you know, diaries, uh, the you know meditations. But I, um, you know, there's there's just a, there's a lot to be taken away from that and those you know the the theory and philosophy around stoicism i think you know it has a it has a bad name of being stoic you're so stoic um but but stoicism really is the study of yourself and making yourself a better person and questioning who you are and what you're doing that that in essence is stoicism that's why i googled it wikipedia told me the stoics provided a unified account of the world constructed from ideals Mm -hmm. of logic monistic physics and naturalistic (laughs) ethics of these, they yeah. emphasized ethics as the main focus of human knowledge, and their logical theories were more interest than later philosophers. Stoic- Stoicism teaches the development of self-control and fortitude in means of overcoming destructive emotions, which honestly, in 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 econ- economics and business, yeah, that's huge. Yeah. It's humongous. <laughs> Philosophy holds that becoming yeah. a clear and unbiased thinker allows mm-hmm. one to understand universal reason. So how did... Like, is that just, is that just kind of naturally instinctively who you are as a person or is that a learned behavior for yourself? Um, I, it, to me, it's, it's, it's learned. It's not learned. It's, well, I guess I would say learned behavior. Yeah. I don't, I don't like that saying learned behavior because then it sounds like you, know, you didn't, you, you, you know, you weren't, you weren't really that, that person. I think, I think there is a innate want from humans to be to just be better, to be better people mm-hmm. at the heart of things, at least myself. So, you know, I studied philosophy in, in undergrad and, uh, and really started to read more about Buddhism, maybe like 15 years ago. And then stoicism, you know, about five, eight, seven years ago, Ryan holiday is my go-to guy. He's, you know, he's an author. Uh, he's written several books about stoicism. He runs the daily stoic website, the daily stoic email, um, if you really want to understand stoicism and the benefits of it, you know, he's your guy. He's, you know, numerous videos, his daily emails, his books he's written, uh, that, that he, 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 to me has been a huge, um, teacher, uh, to me about stoicism and applying it to my life. But I, you know, Wikipedia is a very formal definition. Again, I would just go back <laughs> to my definition. Stoicism is just all about making yourself a better person. I like your definition better. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do like your definition better. Yeah. Although, like, I feel like a lot of walks of life are about making yourself better. Like you can say, like, you know, working on going to the gym is like an art of making yourself better. Yeah. Right. No, but just, fitting yeah. your definition, no, I think it totally makes sense. It's more, it's more internal, right? It's more yeah, about very internal. It's, it's more about the internal. mind. And I think, yeah. I think a lot of people like myself, I have uh, generalized anxiety I've had since a kid. I don't know, I don't know if you're going to believe this, but I didn't mm-hmm. talk in kindergarten. Like throughout, can't believe that. throughout the whole school year, I didn't say a word out loud, like in the classroom. Your, po- your podcast would not have been that good in kindergarten. It would have been actually, it would have, it would have been a lot of whispering in people's ears. But um, I bring that up because like, you know, how do you beat that kind of anxiety? Well, you kind of got to trick yourself, mm. right? And I think yeah. meditation was something that could have helped me, but meditation is hard. It's, yeah. it's really, it's really difficult to do to sit in a quiet room and just breathe and empty your mind. Um, for, for me, what kind of clicked for me was I was listening to a, like a guide meditation probably on like, um, yeah, I forget might've been YouTube. It might've been the call map. I love the call map. Yeah. Yeah. But they're like, focus on your breath, not just specifically your breath, but it's the little pause in between the inhale yeah. and then again on the end of the exhale. Cause before you take yeah. a breath or release a breath, there's always a little pause. If you focus yep. on that pause, your mind will just erase. Yeah. So what, what yeah. what's what's your tick? What makes you really focus and hone in on meditation? Because it does work. It's very effective. Oh, it's it's a great practice. But I think to your point, Will, like it, it's the hardest thing I do. The yeah. hardest thing I do. You know, I uh, I run you know ultra marathons. I you know raise four kids. He's sitting still for five ten minutes every day. And just thinking and having thoughts wander, it, it is extremely difficult. And that is the point of meditation is it's not supposed to be easy. I don't think people realize that. I know people that try it and they quit and, uh, you know, it's too hard. I can't do it. Well, that's that's the point. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is meant to be difficult. Sitting alone with your thoughts and your feelings and your emotions with no distractions is can be an unpleasant experience. The more you do it, the more comfortable you get though with yourself. 
And I think that is a, a key strength and takeaway of doing meditation every day. It allows you to investigate who you are. Do you follow Sam Harris? Yeah. Yeah. He's, Sam's great. He's, he's the one who really like opened my eyes to meditation and made me want yeah. to try it. Um, yeah. I'm a big fan of Sam Harris. I think he's very, yeah. very, very smart, especially when it comes to meditation. When do you yeah. find the best time to meditate is for me? I tried doing it before bed. It would sometimes if I, if I did it right, I got in that zone. <laughs> I'd be out like a light. Stop like a baby. Yeah. Always in the morning for me. Always, always in okay. the morning. It's a good way to start my day and just clear my mind and understand that, you know, where I am. But I think the huge benefit of doing it as a regular practice and starting out and, you know, you do your, you know, for me, for instance, a morning meditation is a phenomenal way to like clear my head and start my day. I, you know, I find, you know, after years of doing it and years of practice, I can meditate anywhere uh, on mm -hmm. the train eating lunch, going for a run. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't rececommend doing it while you're driving your car. <laughs> but, you gotta, you gotta but, leave your eyes open for that one. Yeah. You can still meditate with your eyes open, but you you can get even walking meditation is a great habit to get into. And you know, no phone, no ear, but just walk and listen to sounds and you know, uh, try to understand what you're hearing and and what how it makes you feel. I think you know meditation again is introspection of you know how how you are feeling and reacting to things in order to better adjust and you know get over the anxieties that you have um, understand your strengths know where you know you have weaknesses and what you need to work on as a person and you know investigate that and that's you know meditation is not about sitting still for five minutes with a clear mind and having nothing in your head <laughs> that is not meditation right. if you think that's what it is you're gonna fail miserably it's not meditation. How long do you meditate for? Do you have a set time where it's kind of just, you, you, you feel it in your mind, you feel it in your body and you go, I'm good. Yeah, I do about five to seven minutes. Five, seven minutes? Yeah, that's easy. it. It's, easy, it's not easy. much. It's really not, but it is the hardest, most difficult five minutes of my day. It is really, you know, I, there's times where, you know, I start out fine and then, you know, my chime goes off and it's like, I totally forgot what I was doing. And I don't remember, you know, meditating. Um, and days like that, I meditate again um, because it's, to me, it's, it's just a incredibly important practice that I have. Right. All right. So you, you got these, you got these Buddhists, uh, Buddhist methods, you got these ideologies, mm -hmm. this, these ethics and stoicism mm -hmm. on how you kind of bury yourself. Can those ethics or philosophies sometime clash with your professional life? Like, and, and if so, like, how do you deal with mm -hmm. that? Either from someone under you or above you. Because if they're yeah. under you, you can just kind of go, well, too bad. I'm the boss. If they're above yeah, I mean, you, it's kind of like, <laughs> like yeah. I, how, do you, how do you balance that? Because like, if you, someone, especially someone who thinks logic, sometimes the, the worst enemy of someone who thinks logically is someone who yeah. thinks illogically. <laughs> right? Yeah. So like, yeah. how, do you, how do you balance that with like, I have my way of thinking, my morals, my values through these teachings I've taught myself. It's been very beneficial. And I got this schmuck over here who just doesn't get it. Yeah, you gotta work I mean, with that I, I just, <laughs> I, I would just say I'm a student of life, so I love to learn about a lot of different things, a lot of different philosophies. I studied theology as, as you know, a teenager uh, in through college. Like, I, I, I just am a sponge for all of that information. So, um, you know, I just realized that every people are different. So, you know, I don't prescribe like let's just take buddhism for instance like i am not a buddhist i would not say i'm a buddhist i've studied buddhism for buddhism for a long time and i've studied the practices of buddhism but i'm not i am not a buddhist i would never go around saying i'm buddhist because that would be false but you know i study the precepts i study what it's about what it means and you know i apply what i feel like i can apply to my life and um and and act in a act in a way that matters